the three-phase transformer YY connection, and the introduction to the infamous square root 3. Module 4. Evaluating the line-to-line -line voltage equation. Be sure to check out the resources section under this video for helpful comments, suggestions, and clarifications. In the last couple of videos, we took a simplified approach to three-phase transformers, the YY connection, and current and voltage quantities. In this module, we're going to talk thoroughly about the line-to-line -line voltage and phase voltage relationship. Okay, so we understand for this particular arrangement of the Y-connected three-phase transformer, the line-to-line -line voltage between line A and line B is equal to the primary phase A voltage minus the primary phase B voltage. The question is, how would we evaluate this equation? Remember, this is where the root 3 comes from. Our next step is to define our phase voltages. If you're like me when I was learning this, I typically tuned out here. So let's pay close attention and learn this stuff intuitively. The root 3 comes from the fact that we have a balanced system that is typically running in a normal operation or in steady state. All three terms pretty much mean the same thing. A balanced system is a system which maintains three key rules at all times. These rules are specifically for current and voltage quantities. Note, the balanced system is methodically introduced in a different module. Be sure to check out the resources section for additional information. The three rules for balanced systems are Rule number one Phase A, B, and C voltages or currents must have equal magnitudes. Rule number two Phase A, B, and C voltages or currents must have 120 degrees phase displacement between each other. And rule number three, phase A, B, and C voltages or currents must have either an ABC or ACB phase rotation or phase sequence and must rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, so we're going to create a balanced set of phasers. Then verify if we're following all three rules for a balanced system. The first thing that we'll do is draw a phaser diagram with an X axis and a Y axis. We're going to draw a nice round circle right in the middle. We're also going to label the degree marks at every 30 degree increments. We'll also draw a reference line in a different color at the zero degree mark. Let's assume that our phase A voltage is 2400 volts at zero degrees. Our phase B voltage is 2400 volts at 240 degrees. And our phase C voltage is 2400 volts at 120 degrees. Is this a balanced set of voltages? Well, let's see. We have equal magnitudes of 2400 volts for phase A, B, and C voltages. So we follow rule number one. We have 120 degree phase displacement between all three phasers. So we follow rule number two. And we're assuming that all three phasers are rotating in a counterclockwise direction. And while they rotate, the three phasers produce an ABC phase rotation or phase sequence. So we're following rule number three. And this, my friends, is what we call a balanced set of voltages, which contribute to something we call a balanced system. So the next question is, what do we do with this balanced set of voltages? Well, we evaluate our equations, of course. The followings are the equations that we developed in the last couple of modules. Okay, so we're going to do this in three simple steps. Step number one. 
Okay, so the first step is to draw a phasor diagram similar to the previous one with phase A, B, and C voltages in a balanced state, rotating in a counterclockwise direction. Remember that the magnitude of all three phasors is 2400 volts. This is what we're assuming, okay? And this is the voltage across the primary windings of the transformer. So we're assuming that we'll have 2400 volts across winding A on the primary side, 2400 volts across winding B on the primary side, and 2400 volts across winding C on the primary side. And all three voltages are displaced by 120 degrees. Step number two. In the second step, we're going to add phase A voltage with phase B voltage using the head to tail method. So we'll pick up phase B and connect it to the head of phase A. So essentially, the head of phase A is connected to the tail of phase B. Hence the name, the head to tail method. And the resultant vector is the vector that starts at the origin and ends at the last phaser, which is the phase B voltage. So this is our resultant vector. But this resultant vector represents or equals phase A voltage plus phase B voltage. However, the equation that we need to evaluate is phase A voltage minus phase B voltage. Since there is a minus sign associated with phase B voltage, we need to take phase B voltage and rotate it 180 degrees. It's very important to keep in mind that the 180 degrees rotation is due to the minus sign in front of phase B voltage. Okay, so we have phase A voltage and we have the negative of phase B voltage. We're going to perform the head to tail method. So we're going to take the tail of negative phase B voltage and connect it to the head of phase A voltage. Step number three. Okay, so in the third step, we're going to draw our resultant vector. We'll start at the origin and end over here. The resultant vector equals phase A voltage minus phase B voltage. Any idea what we should call this resultant vector? How about VLLAB? Remember our equation? The line to line voltage between line A and line B equals phase A voltage minus phase B voltage. The phasor diagram that we've drawn actually represents this particular equation. Let's make some observations about our phasor diagram. The magnitude of VLLAB is larger than phase A voltage. It's also larger than phase B voltage. The angle of VLLAB is not the same as phase A voltage or phase B voltage. So here's a question. How much larger in terms of magnitude is VLLAB compared to the magnitude of V phase A or the magnitude of V phase B. And those of us who answered, well, it's root three times larger or 173% larger. And that my friends would be correct. When looking at the magnitudes alone, we should expect that the line to line voltage to be equal to root three times larger than any phase voltage under the balanced set of voltages assumption. We'll continue our discussions about root 3 in the next module. Thank you. This module is brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive.